Superhero movies. They're part of a genre that, depending on who you ask, is either providing peak fiction at a higher level of entertainment than any other medium of storytelling could be, or is the very sin that plagues modern day society with its drive towards high box office returns and desensitizing the public to unintelligent and unrighteous movies. I happen to fall on the line of not really worrying about what the public's perception even is, so we're good in that aspect. I just like movies. And the cinema of superheroes can be high quality as well. People make claims of superhero fatigue, which is just, I'm sorry, but it's not real. What you mean is that you have countless Marvel and DC movies being thrown at you, and maybe only one out of five actually being anything above, yeah, whatever, it's fine, I guess. Fatigue. That's what you have. But the minute we get a superhero movie like The Batman or Spider-Verse, everybody's declaring their love for the genre again. So may I remind you, yes, because these studios have been putting out so many, of course a big percentage have been received as heartless, mindless, and soulless creations not even passing for a simple two hours of entertainment. Now that might be a little harsh, but there are also a great number of really good superhero movies as well. The Dark Knight, The Batman, The Guardians of the Galaxy movies, Logan, Incredibles, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. All of these are actually really, really good. Some of the best of the genre, and outside of being superhero movies, they're just really good movies as a whole. And so that's why you're here. You're tired of spending another $15 to $20 to go see the next DC flop every few months, and you just want something refreshing. You want something fresh. Something that goes deeper than the surface. Something meaningful and thoughtfully crafted. Then look no further than this man. That's right, Hideaki Anno. The man behind a little niche series called Evangelion, and also a renowned massive otaku. He's worked on various other anime and directed some truly brilliant art films. From live action anime remakes to, I guess, anime anime remakes? His most recent ventures in the industry have been remaking his beloved childhood tokusatsu idols. The first, of course, being the multi-award winner for best film, director, editing, art direction, sound, and so forth. And yes, that's Shin Godzilla, which if you didn't know is phenomenal and there will most likely be future videos on that moving forward. Same goes for the tokusatsu reboot he wrote that was directed by Shinji Higuchi, Shin Ultraman which is also a fantastic superhero film unlike any other. But that's not today. Today is Shin Kamen Rider. There truly is no movie made like how Shin Kamen Rider was made. Anno loved the original Kamen Rider series as a kid. I mean, rightfully so, that show is god tier. And during the making of the rebuild of Evangelion series, Anno and Toei made a deal and began planning a Kamen Rider reboot. I say began planning because this was something for way in the future as it wouldn't be another decade or so until it would release. Hideki Anno had gotten a lot out of the show in his youth and this wasn't meant to surpass the series. In fact, Anno actually publicly said exactly that. Rather, this was meant to be his way of saying thank you to the original series and its creator, Shotaro Ishinomori, as well as maybe a way to provide an impact on today's generation. And to put it lightly, Anno did not take this lightly. But before we get fully into it, some of you may be asking, what is Kamen Rider? Well, Kamen Rider, from 1971, is about a college student, Takeshi Hongo, who is kidnapped by the evil organization Shocker and turned into a cyborg, a hybrid of a man and a grasshopper. Before Shocker is able to rewrite his brain, the last procedure of the transformation, for some reason, Hongo escapes. No longer being fully human, he believes he can no longer take part in aspects of human life, like romances. So instead, out of vengeance and hope for the future of humanity, he vows to fight Shocker until they are defeated or until he draws his last breath. And Shin Kamen Rider essentially follows the same plot, only with a few changes and modernizations to spice it up. And to justify its existence, is not only a retelling, but a reimagining. Because despite it being an adaptation that is more respectful and faithful to its source material than any other out there, It is also an entirely new and fresh piece of cinema. To start us off, let's discuss the acting and characters. If you have ever seen any of Hideaki Anno's live action films, you'll know he has a very specific style of directing, even if you've seen his anime, which is very stylized and very serious, usually. Which isn't to say he doesn't have comedic moments in his films, but the overall tone is a serious one. There's something so personal and sincere from everyone's performances, especially the main three. Four? Let's just talk about three for this. Minami Hamabe plays Ruriko Minorikawa, who is a very cold and reserved person. Not intentionally cold, but 
Given her circumstances, she has rejected the idea of happiness and is afraid of showing attachment. But because of her relationship with the main character, she learns to feel joy again. Wait a minute. This sounds familiar. Suffice it to say, Hamabe does an excellent job in this role. Tatsuko Emoto has become the fan favorite as Hayato Ichimonji. He hits the emotional beats incredibly well and also provides a good amount of the comedy that is really enjoyable. And that brings us to Sosuke Ikematsu, who plays Takashi Hongo, Kamen Rider. He's socially awkward, kind, and caring, and he has a bit of a shake throughout the entire movie. Whether Ikematsu, Ano, or someone else brought that to the table, it adds so much depth to his character. Kamen Rider is a character that wears a helmet to hide his tears when he has to fight fellow cyborgs, like himself, because he knows their pain and only wants to help them. And Ikematsu brings that spirit to life. His backstory is told in such an interesting way that you never really get in other movies. His emotion that he puts into the character of Hongo is breathtaking and heartbreaking. Shin Kamen Rider's musical score, composed by Taku Iwasaki, who you may know from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. First of all, they use a couple tracks straight from the original series that are integrated flawlessly, as well as new epic versions of the opening theme many times during the movie's runtime. From adrenaline techno rap, to a relaxing guitar, to sad and longing piano, to majestic and emotional strings, this movie's soundtrack is outstanding in every aspect. And like every good movie soundtrack, it elevates the already amazing performances, visuals, and messages of the movie to another level entirely. From unconventional and purposefully continuity-breaking rapid editing, to being uncomfortably close to people's foreheads, to mixed media GoPro shots, extravagant stylized CG battles, thought-provoking framing, pretty sunsets, and mirrored shots. Shin Kamen Rider has it all to satisfy your need to an actual creatively made superhero movie. Shin Kamen Rider also completely destroys the three-act structure that most films abide by to create its own narrative. Its story begins in the middle of an action scene and from then on, the characters are clearly on a mission from start to finish, moving from one shocker enemy to the next, which isn't the only part of this movie that symbolizes the seemingly never-ending battle for humanity. It balances its pacing with over-the-top bonkers and fun action, with quiet character-driven moments better than most other superhero movies have. The beginning hooks you, and the ending serves as either a good setup or a beautiful place to leave the story. Now that's all well and good, it being creative and thoughtful and all, but the story, is the story good? You're goddamn right. Yes, it it is. It's, it's really good. This movie touches upon a multitude of themes, but perhaps the entire point is to highlight what it means to be human, specifically in today's world. How do individuals deal with the perseverance and resilience of the human spirit? Looking to live for hope and only finding despair. What problems can occur in a society that views individuals or others as greater or less than in terms of value? What is happiness? A line in the film discusses that the Japanese kanji for cruelty and happiness are almost the same and compares the relationship of the two to a double-sided coin. Not only are these themes present in the original series, but they are modernized now to mean something today. For example, the villains. Shocker was originally an organization with connections to the Nazis. Shin Kamen Rider Shocker is an organization in disarray with no clear leadership and inspired by current issues like the happiness cult and many corrupt political parties and agencies. Not only is it modernized, but it's also Anoized. I'm always fascinated by watching Anno's works because they are essentially ways of experiencing his worldview, and all the themes and messages of Shin Kamen Rider are tackled directly through Anno's lens, which is the primary reason the movie ends up being so well done and so unique. So, now you may be wondering, well, this all sounds great, but how accessible is it to me, a first-time viewer with no experience in the world of Kamen Rider, or maybe even Japanese superhero movies? Well, Shin Kamen Rider is not only based on the original Kamen Rider, but it's also made like it as well. That is, this is a 70s tokusatsu with modern technology. So it has many tropes, editing styles, and jokes that the original would have had. If you love the Showa era of TV, this is for you. If you haven't seen any Showa era series, that's okay too. There's so much passion and love put into this film that it's really hard not to just have a good time. It's not only a beautifully told story with creative and thoughtful composition, well done performances, and incredible music, but it's also a superhero movie. And not like any of the mediocre movies that make up most of the genre, but it's made by people who truly understood what makes a superhero and what it was that made the public fall in love with them to begin with. 